This is Roll With It Unplugged, a casual take on telling improvised stories through role-playing games. In our Halloween special, Jim, Doc, and Chris are joined by Brian McKittrick to play Goblin Quest, a comedic role-playing game by Grant Howitt. A new day dawns on the great battle camp. The orcs march in square outside their barracks. The hobgoblins file and cross-reference in the gray wards. The bugbears plot and scheme in the Dun Inn. Above it all, the black tower of the wizards stands proud, holding the wicked sorcerer generals that command the army to the war. And underfoot, in the dank caverns under the world, in the green pits, spawn the goblins. The goblins are bred for war, for cannon fodder, for hopeless attacks, for death. You are a goblin. You have a week to live, and you are going to make a mark. You are going to undertake a goblin quest. It is All Hallows Eve in the Great Battle Camp. Not much has changed, really, since the camp is populated by orcs, hobgoblins, wizards, that kind of thing. But the goblins are excited. You see, today is a day that they aren't going to war. So most of them are preparing for the festivities. And this is a chance not many goblins get to make. I mean... Most goblins don't live more than a week. So, these goblins are planning to have the best Halloween ever. They are going to get the most candy, and they are going to eat the, all of it. Standing tall uh, from the overly eagle, eager clutch is Minus, dressed as a bedsheet ghost, with way too many eye holes cut, cut into it. Well, at least if you think you need two eye holes. He has way too many eyes, period, all over his body. And so they're just enough for him. Fellow goblins, we stand today in order to get candy. I say we get the most candy and prank as many of the humans as we can. Who is with me? Who stands with us? Butch. Butch stands with you. Butch is a uh, small goblin, but he thinks he's ten feet tall. He He is boastful and he's great at arm wrestling. He has an iron stomach. He can eat anything, and he's totally fine. He's Bush, big, large, huge. Should we say our dreams as well? Do our dreams? If you want to. <coughs> big, large, huge family has a great dream. It is to beat, at arm wrestling, Stallone's character in the classic film, Over the Top. <laughs> the likelihood we meet Stallone is pretty low. Yes, but any training they do with arm wrestling will be inching them closer to their goal. Artie Don't rolls his eyes. Um, He's dragging his towel behind him and wearing his uh, bathrobe. Uh, He is, of course, with the clutch called the Time Bandits. I'm with you, he says. That's it? What more do you want? You seem kind of lackluster in this this quest. Yeah, well. Just like you're along for the ride. Uh, Technically, we're all extremely optimistic. It's just... uh, I'm not overly exuberant. We must succeed. We will succeed. We just want to have to make a big deal out of it. We must make a big deal out of it. In the corner, there is a box. <laughs> a cardboard box. And out from it bursts another goblin. Kept you waiting, huh? This is, of course, Sorted Snake from the Shadow Slinker Clutch. <laughs> I hate it when he does that. <laughs> We all do. He has to do it every time we have a meeting. I understand this is a OSP mission. On-site procurement. We're going to be attaining candy and assu- consuming it. Yes, but first we need to get things to hold the candy in. How, right? How about a box? Well, we can't all carry boxes. It's not a big enough box. We need more candy than we can fit in our stomachs. Besides, we have to go back in time and invent it first. Yeah. What are you talking about? Candy? Well, if we don't, there'll be a paradox. But candy already exists. Um, 
Yeah, because we invented it. So now we have to go do that. That makes perfect sense to me. Yeah, me too. Nano machines. <laughs> <laughs> but where should we look for the candy containers? Oh, I'm doing your voice. <laughs> <laughs> where should we look for the candy containers? The box factory. We don't... There's not one here. There's a done in. They probably have a lot of containers, like barrels and stuff. Or I buckets. Can, I can hold my towel this way. It's, it's like slimy and dirty. Ugh. <laughs> we can use the skulls of our enemies, hollow them out, and carry them around as Halloween jar things. That's dark, Butch. That's hard to do. We could go take skulls from someone else. That could work. Yeah. I bet the wizards have a bunch of skulls in their laboratory. Yeah, wizards. Or they threw some out. I don't know. Let's go look at the garbage pits next to the wizard tower. Let's go. Yes. Garbage pits. Hurrah. So who wants to look in the garbage pits first? I run to look in the garbage pit. How do you look in the garbage pit? Uh, really funnily. Like, it's piles <laughs> of garbage. Oh, I just start pushing the garbage out of the way. Out of my way, garbage. But this sounds like you're taking your first action. I'm taking an action. I'm pushing it out of the way. Got massive forearms. No problem. So which are which of your traits are you using? He has four arms. <laughs> uh, well, I've been pretty. Uh, let's see, I've been pretty boastful with this move, so I guess I'm using that quirk. You always get one to start with. Okay. And then. So each I'm one. definitely being boastful when I was going forward, um, and I'm not using my iron stomach, but you could argue I'm using arm wrestling. I'm pushing. I pushing it out like this. <laughs> you're like, using like, arm moving to the side. Arm wrestling moves. Okay. So, I'm using arm wrestling move. So, there we go. So, I've got three. Okay, so I got a one, a two, and a six. So, that is one success and two injuries. Oh, no. Now, this is the stage at which a misfortune happens. So, why don't you read what is written on your card, and then describe what actually happens. A frazzled-looking human in a red jumpsuit staggers out of a hole in the ground waves a laser pistol at the goblins and accuses them of being tiny mutant traitors before opening fire. So what does this look like? Ah! It's a time traveler! Ah! I'm incredibly scared! I... Ah! I'm gonna die of fright! I don't think you die of fright. I think you die of laser fire. <laughs> ah, I dodge the laser fire, but then die of fright. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, traitors! Ah! <laughs> This is sort of ironic, but not really, because I don't know what that means. Uh, I only have one life to give for the people of the goblins. I'm refusing to die, but wait, no. Hurry yes, up, I'm up. dead. Wow, <laughs> he monologued a lot. But look at all the trash he dislodged. Along with a crazy human. Yeah, well, all I'm saying is, uh, you know, he was at least successful. So who wants to deal with the crazy human? Uh... All right, fine. <laughs> as uh, luck would have it, as you guys are talking about who wants to deal with them, from out of the shadows, hops out, sorted snake. He's, he's using a CQC. Yeah. <laughs> How's he do that? So what, what, what traits are you going to be using? So um, fond of boxes. We'll say that there was a box somewhere in the rubble here that I was able to pop out of. Um, special ops expertise. Uh, quite severe quirk. I'd say that applies. Uh, dream eliminate all villains. This is a human. Humans are the enemy. So that's four dice plus one? So five dice? Five dice. Uh, oh, that is... <laughs> three ones, a two, a three, and a six. That's a bad thing. Four injuries and a success. Do you want to re-roll that? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and re-roll that. Okay. Oh, are you able to re-roll? You have a lucky year. Well... Oh, well. You had a lucky year. I had a lucky year. That's fine. <laughs> then it got burned by laser fire. I still had a success that time, so it's probably worth Each it. Each goblin has his own lucky year, though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. So it happens to be my right ear, right next to the eye patch. No, I think it actually has to be the left ear. <laughs> no, that's the one with the codec in it. <laughs> that's better. Wow. Yeah. So a one, a three, a four, a five, and two sixes. Okay, so a good thing and a bad thing cancel out. That's the three and a four. Okay. You do take one injury, but it is three successes. 
spring out of the box, grab the human, put him in chokehold. Uh, and he's flailing, and obviously he's much bigger than I am, so he sort of overpowers me a little bit. Uh, and so I take an injury, but I eventually manage to get the human knocked out. Um, and then when he's uh, out, I go ahead and take my knife and... You're not going to Fulton him? What's a Fulton? <laughs> I don't think he's that snake. Uh, oh. I think Fulton was uh, Clarissa's brother on Clarissa Explains It All, right? <laughs> a really annoying brother. Fulton. What's a Clar- Clarissa? Did we win? We still haven't found any containers! Meanwhile, Sworded Snake is dragging the human's body into a pile of rubble. <laughs> it just sort of <laughs> slakes around the corner as you guys continue talking. I'm going to dive in. I'm unwashed. It doesn't matter. So what trance are you using? Well, my unrelenting optimism is going to make sure that uh, I succeed. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty good with tech stuff, so I think I will use my ancestral heirloom, the timey-wimey machine, which is totally not a clock we found in the dumpster 20 minutes ago before we started, uh, to make sure that uh, we'll just go back in time to before all this junk was here. And you're adding one for your base? Yes. Okay. So, um, bad stuff and good stuff cancels out, and I've got one success and one failure. Or injury. Right, that's what I mean. Uh, and that is enough, because we only needed five successes. Right. So that's the last success. You do find it, so describe how you find it. Okay, um, so, yeah, d- d- swimming through the big pile of garbage, like Scrooge McDuck, uh, I... Pop out of the top. Eureka! And I hold up... Yes, you do. <laughs> I, I hold up a giant um, kind of uh, bag full of grocery bags. All right. But we need, we need some place to keep them all safe and contained. We need a bigger bag. The biggest bag. What could work? I know. The hobgoblins had a huge inflatable bouncy castle earlier and a swimming pool. If we get that swimming pool, we can use it as a big thing to hold the candy in. That's a great idea. We just need to go get it. So we need to get past the hobgoblins. I know what I'll do. I'll take off my costume and dazzle them with all these eyes. Because Minus has too many eyes. (laughs) Um, So Minus is going to use his way too many eyes. Um, and his expertise at not getting caught. Excellent. Uh, and his dream to prank someone. Or to prank everyone, actually. Ooh. All at once? Yeah. Hmm. That is... A terrible roll, is what that is. An injury and a good thing. Um, re-roll. Yeah, I'm gonna use my re-roll. Much better. Uh, no, it was two injuries, though, and two... But uh, two successes. That was cocked. No, it wasn't. It was a two. Okay. It was a two. We yeah, he dies, but two successes. So, um, he manages to... Uh, Minus runs up, flash, essentially flashes all the goblins, or the hobgoblins. Oh, dear lord! Too many eyes! <laughs> ah! And uh, they pummel him into the dust. Uh, <laughs> Those but, aren't eyes. <laughs> no, they are eyes. All of it is eyes. He's a potato goblin. Ugh. Um, but they're too busy uh, beating him into a pulp for uh, them to notice anyone else taking an action next. So, uh, that was the last person in the round, so we go to, uh, we start over. So who wants to go next? Well, as, as you start going, you, you notice that um, it starts to get more and more foul smelling. This is even foul by, by uh, goblin standards, as uh, Diesel, the, the clutch mate of Butch, runs up. Uh, the so disgustingly foul smelling that you can actually see stink lines coming off of them, <laughs> like oo- like just kind of oozing off of them. What color are they? Uh, they are yellowish brown. Ugh. Yeah, the, the, the worst with, stink lines. With a hint of of green, like a, a slight a slight tint of green. That might just be Artie Don't standing behind him actually <laughs> swimming through garbage. Okay, so wait. So you said the hobgoblins are, are dazzled, the hobgoblins, they've been dazzled. Yeah, they've been dazzled, but we still need to get that that swimming pool, the inflatable swimming pool. All right. So Diesel Diesel runs up and uh, he's I'll I'll take it. I'll do it. I'll do this one for win this one for Butch. Yeah. With uh, oh, and also I should I should probably mention that first uh, Diesel um, he pulls out from the box that his family is carrying a uh, 
a small temporary tattoo, and he slaps it on his on his arm, and he's like, "Yeah, let's see what I get this time." And he pulls it off, and it's a pretty butterfly. Ah, oh, <laughs> another another dud. <laughs> and then he runs up, and he uh, makes me so angry. <laughs> it makes me angry, but I'm gonna grab this pool, this swimming pool. I kind of like it. I'll, I will do because he's been extremely boastful. So I will roll. And he's pretty strong. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'll do. I'll take one more because the. Uh, the butterfly angered him, so he rushed forward to get it. So he's gonna, he's gonna get it. Rage strength. I think three's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll re-roll that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna probably kill all my goblins every time I take an action. I rolled. Um, I rolled uh, two ones, so I died. Just, I would have died instantly. So uh, Diesel reaches up. Ah, goodbye, year, and just yanks his ear off. Oh, that, that, that's gonna leave a mark. He has three more. <laughs> Ears? Yeah. Goblets don't have to have two ears. All right, that's good. Oh, right, so two successes and a good thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, Diesel rushes forward and he grabs he grabs the swimming pool and his like oversized forearms are just too powerful to just throw it up in the air. And it al- he almost trips over himself as he flips it over, but it doesn't matter. He just keeps he keeps running Every- and tripping and rolling with the f- with the swimming pool. Now we need it. to find a place to hide it. Who, who's good at hiding things? What about hiding it under a box? Did someone say box? <laughs> it's someone box said thing. box. <laughs> does he pop out of another box this <laughs> yeah, time? he does. Of course. <laughs> Why didn't uh, we just use all these boxes to store the candy? No, that would make too much sense. <laughs> now, there's a slight concern here. The intel team tells me this, this place has got high winds. But... I think my family heirloom... And he pulls out his family heirloom, which is the Metal Gear... It is a cog that is made of metal. Speaking of wind, don't stand down wind from me. Ooh. Believe me, I won't. The flowers are wilting next to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I'm going to attempt to keep down the pool in this high wind area with my the Metal Gear. Okay. All right, so heirloom, um, fond of boxes. And base. You get one more. You always roll oh. one dice. All oh, right, right. Everything else gets added. Um, do yeah, I think that's all that applies for now. Three dice. Uh, three, three, four, plus one, so four, four, five. Yes. So a success and a good thing going forward. Uh, good things do not stack. It's always just a plus one. Gotcha. Uh, so describe your success. He puts the he puts the metal gear down in the middle of the pool, um, and despite the high winds, it seems to want to pick up a little bit, but the gear is heavy enough that it's keeping the pool down. Uh, so now we know it's going to stay in one place at least. We'll call it. Outer heaven. Oh, brother. Because <laughs> candy in heaven is going to be awesome. That joke stinks more than I do. Hmm. And you haven't even been swimming in garbage. <laughs> well, to be fair, I, I do bathe in it. And Diesel opens up his, uh, like, just kind of raises his arm a little bit, and uh, some, like, disgusting banana peels just kind of fall out from under his arm. Oh! Oh, you're... If I could fire you, I would fire you. As as Frump walks in, or with uh, his impressively awful wig, he looks alive, almost like it's crawling on his head. Mm. Did somebody say fire? No, you're fired too. If I could, what we need to do now is tie this thing down so it can't get anywhere. I know we can hide it in time. You're fired. <laughs> Uh, Frump is going to use the Overly Eager's heirloom of the TP roll of infinite length to tie down the, the, um, the, the swimming pool to keep it further. That's a great idea. Wet toilet paper is mm-hmm. well known for its tensile strength. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and I know something about wet toilet paper. Uh, and he's going to badger the rest of the goblins in doing what he wants on threat of being fired with his impressive wig. So he's just going to yell at them and make scowly faces at them all the time. And his weird, lumpy face is going to morph in fluid. Ugh. He reminds me of a Vogon I used to know. Uh, and uh, you had a good thing, so it's plus one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is a bad thing and a success. Um, it works pretty well. Uh, the other goblins uh, managed to get most of it tied down. But um, all this shouting and yelling has, uh, has really worn out his voice and has made all the other goblins pissed off. So... Who wants to go next? I'm going to stand in it with my timey wimey machine and hide it in a pocket universe. 
wait a second. If you open a portal to another time space, we might be able to have an infinitely deep pool of candy. I have no, no. idea what you just said. No, he said pocket space. And I start, Diesel starts reaching into his pockets and pulling them out, and he's throwing the trash, and there's like, a, there's like a dead pigeon, and he just pulls out of his pocket and throws it over his shoulder. Ah, more pocket space, pocket space, ah, fit it in my pocket, right? Right, Artie? This is going to work. I have no idea what you're talking about. Overly enth- er, optimistic? Yes. You have a minus one, remember? Yes. Um, okay, so I, I, I literally got a zero, a three, and a four. The three and the four cancel out, so I guess he takes a wound. And dies. Yeah. Unless you want to re-roll. Oh, and I, I, I think, did you already re-roll with him or not? I have not with him. So you could re-roll with him. Um, I could, and I will. Yeah, it's even worse this time. Uh, so there's a uh, disadvantage moving forward, and I take two wounds. Did you write yourself out of existence? I did. Uh, so what you see is he holds the timey wimey machine, which is totally not a clock that we dug out of the garbage pail. Uh, you know, yeah, right, right, right. um, and up above his head, and um, springs and sprockets start falling out of it as he uh, chants and does his uh, Vogon poetry, and then um, it, it, it literally just kind of explodes and takes him with it. Unfortunately, the pool is not harmed at all. Yeah. Um, he shouldn't have wound that broken clock too tight. <laughs> not a clock. Not a clock at all. Timey wimey. Yeah. In that same spirit, then, uh, allowed Dr. Y to step forward. And he says, That was totally wrong. That's not how you use a timey wimey device at all. Let me show you with my sonic hammer. Okay. And so he goes in uh, to recover and reassemble the timey wimey device. Oh, dear. Oh, oh no. Uh, he, he, so he wait, the that's roll. not how you do it. <laughs> this is the way you do it. <laughs> um, is that, is there, is there, isn't still, there still a bad thing going yeah, forward? Yeah, he's still under the influence of a bad thing. But he does so, succeed. There's still um, one success, though. All That's right. all we need. One success, one advantage, and he takes a hit. Uh, he hits himself with a hammer? Uh, yeah. Um, in the process of doing it, um, he actually clocks himself in the head and his ear comes off. But uh, the ear falls into the timey-wimey device and it starts to tick. <laughs> or make some sort of noise. Uh, yeah. I think it actually just... Because of all the spare parts that fell out of it, I think they were just weighing down the uh, the pool enough. It's hidden under the uh, the corpse. The corpse. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> I agree. I think, yeah. I, think, I think we're good now. I think we've hidden it. Seeing that there's enough weight. Good there. job. We've hidden it now. Sword and Snake actually reaches in and takes back the Metal Gear. <laughs> I might need this. Well, now we need to find the candy. We need to go where the candy is. Where's the candy? We need to go, we need to find a neighborhood that's rich in candy and has lots and lots and lots of candy. Do you have a map to the neighborhood? We need to find a map or make a map. I can draw a map. I can pull, I can draw a map. I got a map in here somewhere. I just start like looking for, so Diesel starts reaching into all of his like crazy pockets with all this trash to see if he can find a map somewhere. He's boastful Mm -hmm. and he definitely boastful and of course he has the one basic one. Mm -hmm. Um... Let's see. Uh, this seems like it's pretty much all that's actually going to make sense. I'm trying to think what else I could fit in there. He could be really, like, like really pulling it out with his, like, arm strength. <laughs> he's really reaching in there with his arm strength. He, he flexes so hard, everything pops out of his Yeah, he's, he's, he's really flexing. So he's using his arm wrestling skills. Is his shirt just, like, ripped straight down? Is he just... Oh, oh he's, yeah. He's, he ripped a long time ago. It's, ar- it's already ta- in tatters. Oh, okay. Are, they, are, are all your goblins wearing wife beaters? Uh, well, some of them are, yes. But some of them are wearing, like, um, ja- like leather jackets or, like, okay. flannel shirts. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that would be... An injury, a good thing, and a success. Okay. Um, now... This is a uh, stage which gets another misfortune. So, Chris, read yours. Oh, boy. Wood Elf Magic animates a nearby pumpkin patch, and the great pumpkin demands blood. Goblin blood. So, uh... Goblin blood? Where's he gonna find... Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. 
ravenous pumpkins start bounding towards the goblins. <laughs> I thought this guy didn't exist. I think you attracted them with your stench. Probably. Probably. Yeah. I'm too smelly for my own good. One of them takes a bite out of you. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, you took I... an injury. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, yes. Yeah, one of the... Wait, I thought there's more than one great pumpkin? There's a ton of pumpkins, and there is a great pumpkin. Okay. So one of the one of the pumpkins leaps forward, and with its disgusting jacko mouth that takes a big jacko bite out of Diesel's arm. Oh! But it, it actually, you know, turns green and curdles and collapses because it's, <laughs> it's, it's like poison. Ah! Taste, taste some more. Taste some more diesel fluid. So, Sordid Snake inexplicably pulls in, uh, an AK out from nowhere. Because um, I don't know exactly how the inventory works in those games. Ack, 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 ack. <laughs> yes. Uh, and he opens fire on the bumpkins. Is he just shouting, ack, 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 uh, Not exactly, no. <laughs> well, Diesel shot in it for, for, yeah, uh, for him. Ack, 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 ack. <laughs> Where are all these birds coming from? <laughs> <laughs> it's a plot weapon, by the way. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, special ops, one for free. Um, quite severe. Um, ba doo ba doo. This is a villain. Limited all villains. Mm. This is my dream. Hey, there's a good thing going forward. Good thing going forward. And he dies. Uh, yeah, and I take two injuries. Uh, that's two successes, actually. Snake valiantly is, uh, taking down pumpkins left and right, but just eventually just gets overwhelmed and he can't get out of it. Um... He tries to hide in a box, but unfortunately, uh, one of them discovers them. The little explanation mark goes up over the head, and he doesn't have any rations left. Snake! 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 That was unfortunate. Are you going to say that every time? Uh, it was the same time. I traveled forward in time. You're fired. All these pumpkins. I hate them. I hate pumpkins. Coming in here, eating goblins. They don't deserve to be here. Get out of here! Shoo! Shoo! Frump is going to uh, to shout and yell and guess, gesticulate wildly at the pumpkins to get them to back off and leave and scare them off uh, because of his horribly impressive wig and his uh, expertise at not getting caught and his slippery skin. His oily, slippery skin. Well, I've got slippery skin, too, of a sort. Shut up, you're fired. <laughs> And I'm gonna use my reroll, I think. Yeah, unless you wanted to die. I kind of wanted Frump to die, but <laughs> that makes two of us. Uh, okay, uh, Frump dies. Uh, a bad thing going forward and a success. Frump um, goes up right to the great pumpkin and and insists that he back down and is fired, but uh, the great pumpkin just kind of bites him in half, and that is the end of Frump. Frump, no! Oh, who cared? Let me teach you goblins a few things about manners. He straightens... Manners? What is that? <laughs> he, he straightens the stalk of celery that's pinned to his chest. Um, not his shirt, mind you. His actual chest. Um, and uh, puts his bowler on his head and just marches straight up to the great pumpkin and says, Excuse me, sir. We are in search of a map. We were wondering if you might know where we might acquire one. Unrelenting optimism. Uh, he is also cross-eyed, so um, <laughs> he probably is not even talking directly to this thing. He might not actually even. He's looking at a vine. Yeah, he might be talking to something else. Um, and you have a bad thing going forward, by the way. Yeah, uh, which means a couple of threes <laughs> and a one. So he dies. Uh, so the the great pumpkin. Uh, just reaches down from behind him because he's not even looking at it mm -hmm. and just um, gobbles him up as uh, parts of Dr. Y go flying and, and strew themselves around on everyone else. Everyone's dying! No! I know what I'll do. I can smell victory. Wait. No, wait. That's, just not, yourself. that's not victory. But it is smelly and that helps. So Diesel decides to run forward and use his... And, and he decides to pull out his ultimate weapon, his stench. As he comes forward, he raises his arms over his head all the way up for the first time in his short goblin life. The smell is overpowering. Everyone around him, goblin included, can't, can't bear it. They back off. He gets close to the goblin and... 
No, pumpkin. Great pumpkin, pumpkin, I'm sorry. Gets forward to the Great Pumpkin, and... Alright, so let's see. We've got definitely boastful. He's, uh, he's extremely foul-smelling. He's waving his arms up in an arm-wrestling stance as they go up. And, uh... Let's see. The one initially, yeah. So that's four, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh no! So the the this the as Diesel comes forward, the stench seems to actually uh, push back the great pumpkin. He, like he can almost not bear it, but he manages to 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 overpower to ignore the smell because he doesn't actually have a nose. It's just carved into his pumpkin face. Oh, that's unfortunate. I didn't think of that. And he says as he gets chomped in half by the great pumpkin. So that's uh, three nil for uh, the great pumpkin. <laughs> What are you gully men doing? <laughs> this is pathetic. Come on. As uh, Ronald the Goblin appears. I'm going to teach you a thing or two about uh, crushing pumpkins. And he's just going to go brutal on it. So uh, one for free, one for brutal, one for quite severe. Uh, probably call this special ops. Yeah, I guess. You have to go commando on a pumpkin. Yeah. Special, special something. Uh, <laughs> and eliminate all villains. That's a lot of dice. It is a lot of dice. Ronald might die. <laughs> Ronald goes all out, though he doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> oh! No. Oh. But he has a lucky ear, so he's going to re-roll. Yeah! Better. Ooh. There you go. Cool. Much better. Uh, so a five, two sixes, a three, and a one. Injury, bad thing, and three successes. So you do succeed at beating the Great Pumpkin and finding a map. So he uh, goes in there and he just is throwing punches and he's going nuts. No! Uh, and he actually, the way he injures himself is he just punches him too much and too hard as the pumpkin's beaten to a pulp. And there's pumpkin everywhere, of course. Uh, where's, but Where's the map? <laughs> the map. Uh, oh, here it is. I almost missed it and all this uh, pumpkin guts. But it was inside the Great Pumpkin all along. <laughs> By the way, you said this was a candy quest? You guys don't need to be eating any candy. Look at you, you're all flab. We need to get you pumped up. Flab? Flab? As Neiman Russ steps forward, clad in his, 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 uh, his pow- power, quotation marks, armor. I see that you have not met the, br- uh, the Battle Brothers such as I before. Yes, this is true, in fact, actually. You're, you're not bad. But all these other guys, we got to get them whipped into shape. Well, what better way to train new recruits by scouting, then? We have a map. We must scout the location before engaging in glorious battle. Agreed. And, like, it does, like, uh, 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 grab and, like, <laughs> flexing the biceps. <laughs> <laughs> so Neiman Ross uh, is going to use his booming voice and, uh... Uh, uh, I think he's just going to use his booming voice to uh, help scout the location by yelling at everyone to do the scouting better. The the cookbook of Stardust says we must scout this place. Uh, That's a bad thing and a a success. So, um, he manages uh, manages to, to locate the human town that, that, Potentially has a lot of candy. Um, but he has found that uh, a lot of other kids have beat us to it. So we're going to need to find a way to maneuver and get around them before we take them out. Doc! <laughs> <laughs> it's me! Marky McDragonfly! Where did you go? Doc is everywhere. Oh! All over us. That's heavy. No, not really. He's well, pumpkin is actually quite light. If you want such a girly man, maybe you'll be able to lift it. Well, I've got my bag ready to go. I, should should we what, go and, and get candy now? Well, we need to know where the candy is. Well, it's it's in the neighborhood, right? But which is the best neighborhood? Oh, and uh, are not corrupt by apples and raisins. That's Hilldale, easy. Where is it? What? Well, it, it's right on the outskirts of town. They're building it. If they're building it, then it wouldn't be finished yet. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good point. Well, they may be finished with it if we go into the future. Here, let me grab the timey-wimey device. 
and just take us up to 88 miles an hour. Ah! And he chucks it. <laughs> Time flies, indeed. Uh, so two successes. Do I have any? Do I have any negatives or anything? Actually, yeah. I had a bad thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so that kicks it back down to an advantage. The ooh, two wounds <laughs> and uh, one, success. one success and an advantage moving forward. Do you want to reroll that? Yeah, I do. I should not have rerolled. Uh. <laughs> uh, so we're at one advantage and. Uh, He's dead. That cancels out. So, yeah, he just dies. So basically what happens is he throws it. You really do think he gets it up to 88 miles an hour. Uh, problem is he did it straight up in the air. <laughs> mm-hmm. And as it comes back down on him, uh, it just flattens him. That was heavy indeed. That was pathetic. Uh, Ronald, why don't you show these whelps how it is done? Yeah, of course. Come with me if you want to live. Whelp. Who, who are you calling a whelp? And suddenly another another member of the big, big, large, huge clutch, Hot Rod, comes up. He's got this open shirt, open chested shirt that he's clearly ripped apart himself. And it's got this bursting hair coming out that's squirming all over the place on its own. His, his opposable manly hairy chest. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> no one can match my hair. You can have the hair thing. But when it comes to muscle... Ronald will always be the best. Yeah, I guess you've got the muscle. But what are muscles without hair? How will you use this hair to scout location? Uh, uh, uh. I see, Hot Rod starts starts scratching his his head. Ah, his his bald head, and there's like a bunch of dandruff coming off anyway. I mean, he doesn't even have hair. Somehow he's got all these dandruff flakes flying off all over the place. He scratches his chest a little bit, and a whole bunch of, like, just, he's got like just, it looks like it's snowing all around him. It's pretty disgusting. And uh, then Hot Rod, uh, then he says, oh, yeah. Nobody can uh, can see see what I'm doing with my hairy chest. I blend right into the night. So he rips off his shirt, and he's just covered everywhere with hair. It's just really disgusting, Aww. and like sort of like it, it's sort of like that scene in, in uh, you know when Rapunzel lets her hair down and it's like <laughs> on for miles and miles. It's like that only with a hairy chest. And he just wraps it around his head too. Yes, to he wraps it. he wraps it around like like uh, you know like one of those. Um, uh, what do you call it? Like like one of those full body burkas where it's just covering all over your body and it's like a robe or something, like a cousin it sort of situation. Oh, and and it, now nobody can see the hot rod. And so Who he, said that? <laughs> <laughs> so now he's going to scout out the neighborhood. So let's see. Oh, and and, and before he does that, also he pulls out another temporary ta- uh, temporary tattoo from the box and slaps it on his arm, and it actually kind of like the hair moves out of the way to like to <laughs> reveal reveal the tattoo, and he pulls it off because he's so excited about it, and it's a lovely little unicorn that's just frolicking in a meadow. Aww. <laughs> ah! The cookbook of starters does not support yeah. this measure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got the uh, he's he's definitely not impressed by that, but it's it spurred him on. So he's got he's using his his. Uh, Relic. He's got his opposable manly hairy chest. He's got his basic one, and he was, of course, boastful because I'm constantly boastful. So, I guess I did not use my arm wrestling strength this time. Well, arguably I did. How many successes do we need? We need three more. Okay, I'm going to use the because I mean he ripped his shirt off. That's like that's basically an arm wrestling move right there. Is this what they speak of when they mention the black carapace? (laughs) Yes, yes, it is. Oof! So that would... I'm gonna I'm gonna have to reroll that because it's only one success and then I die again. So we're burning through goblins fast. Oh, I'm probably gonna die on this one, but I I wanted to get those successes. Come on, come on! I'm such. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> you die twice as much. Yeah, four ones and a four. Is the four anything good? It, it's a good thing going forward. Yeah. Great. So as as, as Hot Rod tries to scout. The hair just keeps pouring and pouring out of his chest, falling down. And, and as he tries to take more steps, he's, his feet start getting tangled up, and he trips forward, and he cracks his jaw on the sidewalk. It's just this hairy mess does. on the sidewalk. It's just a hairy mess, a, a, a mess of, like, blood and hair. And, it's just, and for somehow, because when you die, your hair keeps growing, somehow, <laughs> somehow the chest hair just keeps growing. So this is like... Sort of like a like a disgusting mass of hair is just on the in the sidewalk, just kind of like like sort of like growing a little bit more and 
fanning out. Now remember everyone, this is why grooming is important. <laughs> now, let me show you how we're going to do this. Hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> and you hear a voice from the uh, time bandits that you've not heard before. It's, it's a strangely female voice, and she says, I read that unicorn tattoos are bad luck. Oh, I see her. Yes, it's Hermi Ioni. You, you look a little closer and you realize it's actually just a goblin in drag. <laughs> Goblins don't really have gender, actually. Well, he's still in drag. The, the big, large, huge family would disagree with you. <laughs> they have gender for days. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's open to interpretation. I think that we should go this direction. And I think blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I would have, uh, here's what we're going to do. Uh, so, uh, Ronald steps out into, uh, the street, and, uh, he flags down, uh, somebody, and they stop because he's standing in the middle of the street, and obviously it's a human wondering what the heck a goblin's doing here, if they even know what a goblin is. Look, human, I need your clothes, your boots, <laughs> and your motorcycle. <laughs> I always thought it was a fantasy setting, so I think it's more of a, a bike or a cart. Well, he can still say that. <laughs> it's a bike. You can. You want his bike. But he can I, still say that as a yes, thing. Yes, I know. At one point, I think I came from the future to save the past or something. So, I mean, I'm just going to call it a motorcycle. Are you a time bandit, too? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so basically I'm relaying to see if I can get the human to give me his clothes, boots, and motorcycle. You have an advantage, by the way. Yeah. yeah from from so, my glorious staff. One for free. Uh, brutal, because I will get brutal if I need to. Y- you can be spurred on by somehow the, like, chest hair mm-hmm. death. Quite severe. To give you a little bit it's of an advantage. Uh, yeah, and I'll call it that. You probably just sprayed him with testosterone. Yeah, that's Ew. probably true. <laughs> Alright. Uh, two fives and a one. Which nice. becomes two, uh, okay. two six and a two, but yeah, it's the same thing. Actually. So that's two successes and an injury. Mm-hmm. And so Ronald would that, dies. Would that be enough to get us the uh, We scouting? need one more. Uh, one more. So the human is uh, very freaked out uh, by Ronald's uh, intimidating stature, but unfortunately uh, he decides to take his cart and just run Ronald over. <laughs> but he is running back home, uh, and he looked like he was quite wealthy, so maybe he'll lead us straight to the... Uh, was his cart filled with candy? Ooh. Or trick-or-treaters. Maybe both. Trick or treaters with candy. Our path forward is clear. So then I said, it's not Leviosa, it's Leviosa. The Codex of Stardust does not support this measure. Oh, with that cart out of the way, I see a neighborhood. I'm going in. I'm certain that this is the right way. Nothing. We just get lost more. <laughs> Nothing at all. Wait, was there an advantage? or? Oh, you know what? I get. I actually get one more because I got um, my base diet that I always forget about. Uh, so, yeah, she, uh, you hear, ah! She actually falls down like a storm drain. <laughs> well, then, it is up to I. May the God Emperor serve me well and lead me to, to victory as I run really fast to the, uh, to the neighborhood. You're a Spance Marine, aren't you? <laughs> a Spath Marine. Oh, sorry. So he's going to use his booming voice to inspire the rest of the goblins to run real fast. Mm. Um, uh, and I'm going to use not getting caught and... Uh, yeah, not getting caught, booming voice, and just roll three dice. We just need one more success to finally scout this place. This has been the most casualty-inducing task yet. Oh! <laughs> I haven't used my re-roll yet. I can re-roll that. Much better. A good, a good thing and two successes. So, Hooray. Finally, if you just move, we get there faster. Who'd have thought? We are here, but we need to secure this for the glory of the God Emperor and Candy. <laughs> the remaining goblins cheer. Yay! Yay! Hey, let's secure the neighborhood, guys. Suddenly, a kind of a creepy-looking uh, goblin comes up. He clearly has an 80s porno mustache. This must be Sly. He's got slick back, slick back hair and a flannel shirt. He looks like a walking anachronism. Hey, let's go find some candy. What do you think, guys? 
I know. Let's first secure the neighborhood. Let's try to make sure that we get all this candy for ourselves. The cookbook of studies does not support facial hair. <laughs> I'm going to secure the neighborhood, and I know... Wait, I'm sure I'm going to secure the neighborhood. I know. Poss- I bet you, I bet you when they... When they Get a gander at this big old stash right here. They're just gonna leave us alone. They're gonna let us do whatever the heck we want them to. All right then, that sounds great. And if they don't like it, if they even if they don't want to comply, well, guess what? It's gonna happen anyway. Cause that's just how Sly rolls. Yeah, Sly's really creepy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and first, I'm also gonna see what I get from a temporary tattoo because that's the way that we roll here in the big, huge, large, the big, large, huge. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about when I say big, large, huge, don't you, goblin guys? Okay, here we go. So he pulls out the, the temporary tattoo from his box, and he slaps it on his uh, his uh, uh, ripple, uh, rippled arm, and he pulls it off, and he reveals, uh, let's see, um, it's just pretty little sparkles and stars. <laughs> it's a shooting star? It's a shooting star with, like, pretty little sparkles coming off of it. There we go. Okay, so oh, this is perfect. He gets even more. He's not just boastful. He's like he's giddy from his <laughs> from his tattoo. He loves it that much, and he's using his porno stash most definitely. So um, uh, I guess he's not using his arm wrestling technically. So he's got three. So I mean four rather because he's got the basic one, that one, the porno stash, and the boastful. So yeah, four. Okay. Oh, Please succeed. The scariest goblin yet. <laughs> You have a good thing going forward. Okay, I do? Okay. So that's, that's still only one success. One success. Two good things and an injury. Good things don't stack, but... Oh, they don't? Yeah. That is, is a success. Should I reroll? No, that's one success. I guess I'll go ahead and keep that. Yeah. My, my goblins are dying too quickly. Okay, so... Um, I think you get pepper sprayed for that stash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, one, of the, one of the humans... Uh, rushes up and and sprays Sly in the face with some with some mace. Ah, not my beautiful eyes, my beautiful baby blues. And and he he backs off, but it seems like he's at least frightened off this this uh, poor hapless woman. So the neighborhood's a little bit more secure, not completely, just a little bit. To win, we must strike fear into the hearts of our enemies. Battle Brothers, give me your best scary face. We're going to scare the pants off these guys. And so, uh, Neiman Ross uh, is going to just yell and shout and act as scary as possible in his cardboard armor and helmet, uh, and scare as many of the other trick-or-treaters away. So he's going to use his booming voice, uh, and his dream to prank everyone. And and he's going to do it in a way, he's going to shout at them from the shadows, uh, in a way so he doesn't get caught. Okay, so when, when, uh, Neiman Ross says that he's going to scare the pants off, and Sly says, "Sly, Sly is already removing his pants. Uh. Like he's got, he's got this, he's got this really, uh, um, really tight speedo on. Like that's that's his underwear. So he's like, oh, Sly's like, Sly's like, I'm ready. So go ahead, oh. <laughs> one step ahead of you, partner. Emperor protects me. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I have used my reroll." But I get a good thing, right? Yes, you have a good thing. So that's oh, a bad that thing, perfect. two injuries, and a success. So we're only halfway to completing the last stage. So uh, Neiman Ross is so horrified by the sight of Sly and his Speedo. He, he, his faith wavers, and uh, he, he's just like, oh, I, I, I cannot continue like this. Demons take me no, and and a, a, a portal to the warp opens, and demons drag him through, <laughs> and he is never seen again. It's got to be a crime to be this sexy guy. It is a crime. <laughs> it is, uh, but there, that's one more success. We just need two more. One of the doors of the neighborhood bursts open, and uh, Hermione Ioni comes forward and says. All I had to do was crawl through the sewers and come up through one of the toilets. It was simple math. Anyone could do it. Do I have an advantage? No, you have a bad thing. I have have a bad thing, yeah. Oh, boy. Does Hermione... Does she die? Hermione. 
Um, well, those actually cancel each other out, and um, oh yeah, she does. A, do you have a reroll? Yeah, I do with her. Uh, that's better. Still dies. Yeah. Um, as she's about to launch into uh, explaining how it is that everyone should keep a mental map in her in their head, uh, the housewife behind comes up with a um, frying pan and just whacks her across the head with it. She just falls right there onto the. Get out of my house! That's okay. We need one more success, and we have a good thing going forward. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good thing. So it's up to you. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to change the order. That's allowed, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Because um, this one I've got a very specific plan for. Okay. Um, Ninjo. Nobody notices him coming. In fact, he might have been here for several minutes and nobody even saw him because he's absolutely silent. Uh, Ninjo of the Shadow Slinker Clutch emerges. He is a ninja uh, goblin. And um, he just sort of nods to one of you and sort of darts off. And essentially he's going to go ninja the neighborhood to secure it. Is he going to throw the, the metal gear at people like a shuriken? Uh, if it comes to that, yes. Which, yes, I am adding the die for that. <laughs> so. <clears throat> um, special ops. Quite severe. Um, humans are villains, so we'll add that. Um, Guardy got one for the metal gear, one for free. Um, absolutely silent. No one will see him coming. It's a lot of dice. He might die instantly as well. <laughs> but you have a good thing going forward. Yay. So that would be uh, three fours, a five, and a seven. Two successes. A few minutes pass and Ninjo returns to you guys. Um, you didn't really hear any noise, and uh, nobody seems to be alarmed or anything like that, but uh, he's uh, he, his sword is presently unsheathed and it is covered entirely in blood. Uh, and a few blood splatters you can see like on the parts of his face that aren't covered by the mask, uh, and he just sort of like flicks it off, cleans the blade, puts it away. He just stares at you. Does he give us a haiku? Nope. Okay. You look like Did you've he had some fun. Yep. Mm-hmm. You've had plenty of fun, it looks like, Ninjo. He just gives you this deathly, deathly glare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sly notices the glare, and then he goes, hmm, like what you see, Ninjo? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a split second later, you've got a sword to your throat. <laughs> what, really? Is that really? Yeah. You coming on a little strong, <laughs> aren't don't you think? <laughs> you feel the blade digging into your neck a little bit. <laughs> hey, I like it rough. <laughs> <laughs> Is there PvP in this game? No. You should, you should be backing just, off like like just let him die quickly. <laughs> You should be like, ugh, I creeped out by Let him. him go first. He's been dying a lot when he goes first. I constantly die. He, he, he puts the blade away and sort of like does the thing, like the two yeah. fingers in the eye and points to you and just like slinks away into the shadows. <laughs> now we go trick-or-treating. Oh, we're back T- to... Task three. Stage one. We need to convince the chaperones that we are human children. Uh, Ninjo is actually going to um, ding-dong ditch the first house <laughs> and uh, cover you guys while you try to do the persuading. So... Um, zero, absolutely silent, or uh, one for free, absolutely silent. Um, special ops, and quite severe because he's not actually talking to them. That so two fives, a four, and a one. It's two successes and injury and a good thing. So he uh, he go- goes too way too fast and um, trips over something and kind of like runs into a tree. Uh, but he does evade the, uh, the gaze of the humans as they come out. So, so now Sly steps forward. Oh, God. Oh God. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I got this. Everyone knows the kids always wear Speedos, right? Nobody's gonna, no one, I'm not gonna stand out at all. So, so, so Sly comes green? up. Hmm? Are we green? Whatever color you want, I think. We're okay. green. So, so, uh, so Sly, Sly's just, he's gonna be so... Um, he's so boastful, so confident that he's just going to convince convince all the chaperones that he's just a crazy kid running around in his underwear. So, all right. So, with of course the porno Isn't stash, that the, yeah, the porno stash sells it. There's this adorable kid, boastful. Um, also, he's he's pumping his fists at the same time, like he's like so excited. Look at these guns! Look at these guns! Look at these guns, guys! Check me out. Okay. Explain to me how the stash convinces people he's a small child. 
<laughs> it's more a stature. It's so ridiculous that it has to be. It's got to be fake. To be fake yeah. No. All right. So <laughs> I have a chance at this because he actually could get a reroll, but if I get one death, I'm dead. Oh, I have a good thing though, so that's good. Okay, I have a good thing. This is the best. This is the best situation I've been in in rolling. I have an advantage, and I still haven't used my life on this one dude. Ooh, a good thing, a success, and dead. Yeah, did, I want to try. I can. I can still. You still have your reroll on him. I do because I didn't use it the first time because I only got one in. All right, rub your lucky ear. All right. Slide lovingly strokes his, his lucky oh. ear and it just falls off. <laughs> it didn't want to be part of this body anymore. Please, please, please. Better. Okay. So that's a still six, that's two successes. Two successes. A good thing. A good thing and a death. So So he uh he Does convinces he, them that on. the others are children by virtue of him yes, being a child. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so Sly, so, so the parents, the chaperones, they all they see this man and they go, "Oh no, who's this? Oh, who's this creepy guy? Get him!" So they all like are chasing after Sly and they they chase him into an alley and they tear him apart with oh. their bare hands. <laughs> uh, Sly seems like he's oddly enjoying it for a while until you know he ends up dying. So, unfortunately, Sly's dead, but he's managed to convince them that the rest of the group is are actually children. So we've got the first first one down. Speaking of actual children and not a goblin, uh, Teemer comes up. He is not just a goblin, he is an actual skeleton. Uh, because he is an actual skeleton, he can't really talk because he doesn't have lungs or vocal cords or any of those kind of things. Oh my. So he just kind of rattles his bones at everyone and holds up the TP of infinite length. And what he's going to do is, while they're distracted, tearing apart Sly, he's going to tie them all up in the TP while getting all of it all over their houses and stuff. So he's, uh, and hopefully he's going to share, scare them in, or he's going to use the fact that he's an actual skeleton to convince the chaperones that he's not, you know, a goblin. He's just a skeleton, which has got to be a kid in the skeleton costume, right? Right. Right. Oh... <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, just really I think we have an advantage going forward, don't we? Yeah, that would still. Yeah. Kill How me. does he even have ears if he's just an actual skeleton? Someone else's. Oh, oh. Or, or maybe goblins have skeletal. No, he takes the the the, the ear bones. Yeah, the inner ear. <laughs> and just throws them on the ground. Uh, he I, kept I think, them on a necklace or something. I was thinking they would just be like Mr. Potato Head ears. He just kind of slubs in the <laughs> socket. And I have a good thing going forward. Yes. So that's an injury, a bad thing, a good thing. Two, yeah. So uh, success and. An injury. So, uh, yeah, he manages to do that, but um, uh, his bones don't hold together very well, and he's dropping femurs like crazy. So now he's like half as tall. Mm. But we've successfully tied up all the chaperones, and now all we need to do, or, well, we need to get that candy. All right. The last goblin of the Time Bandits steps forward. Captain's Log. Start date one zero three one one five dot four one three. Captain Spork here. My companions have fallen ill. Perhaps red was not the right color for them to have worn. I will continue this mission and then go back in time to rescue them and invent candy. But there is no time to delay. I must first see what evil lurks behind this alien domicile. Ding dong! Two successes. Nice! That was perfect. What does it look like? Oh, what a fine-looking young man! Would you like some candy? Trick and or treat. (laughs) Oh, yes, absolutely. Here you go. I'd like to think that because it's a sweet old lady, she doesn't give you candy, she gives you raisins. Uh-huh. And, and... But he got two successes, so he should be getting some candy. I wanted candy! <laughs> oh, no. That would have been great if he had if he had failed, but he actually yeah. succeeded. Yeah. For once. Well, we haven't completed the stage yet. We still need I'm, to... That's what I'm I, saying. We need lots of candy. Yeah. I, I think you may be the last ones of the night. There haven't been that many kids come by <laughs> lately. I... <laughs> I'll just give you the rest of what I have and go to bed. And she fills up his plastic sack to the brim with the good candy. Yeah. Not the fun size. 
The only reason there was that much candy left was because Ninjo had his way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Everyone kind of looks at where Ninjo was a moment ago, but he's not there. <laughs> oh, have you done your turn too? Uh, it's here, but I don't know if we've reset. We've reset. Okay. No, we haven't yet. Oh, he was the last one. That was the last oh, one. Oh, okay. I didn't know if... Now we've reset. reset. Okay, so now we've reset. Um, so Ninjo is the next door down, and he knocks. Um, it's kind of like a very quick knock. Um, and uh, when they open the door, he's actually absolutely silent. He says nothing and just stands there with the bag and stares at them. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, severe? Yeah, very severe. Absolutely silent. And yeah, I'd say that's all that applies for right now. Two successes and a failure, or an injury, which would be, um, do we have anything good going forward? That would be the same thing. Yeah. So We don't, because we don't anyway. Um, so he dies somehow, but also gets all the candy. How, how does uh, so, he die? So the, the, the humans there are very creeped out by this very silent ninja standing there holding the bag out. He sees, like, he catches the giant stash of candy that they have behind them. Um, and when they're about to close the door, he actually uh, pushes back open, rushes in, tries to steal all the candy, but he's over encumbered. And uh, though he tries to fight them off, unfortunately, the humans are just bigger and stronger and... Uh, a ninja with one hand and a bunch of candy. They, they rely on speed, and he had no, no speed. And unfortunately, Ninja died. But not before uh, getting all the candy out into the street for you guys to pick up. Was that one success or two? That was two. Okay. So we just need one more? One more. Uh, Timar, another, you know, across the street, um, he's got an idea. He's going he's gonna to ding-dong ditch them, and while they're distracted... Uh, break through the window, steal the candy, and run out, trailing TP everywhere. So that's going to be, um, prank everyone for his dream, uh, not getting caught, and the TP of infinite length. Uh, a success, a bad thing, or a good, oh, they cancel out. So a success and an injury. So he succeeds. Uh, but on his way out the door again, or out the window again, he broke through, um, uh, all the glass and, and shards, uh, catch in his bones and just like, he falls apart as he rolls across the lawn, <laughs> but he managed to get the candy out. Oh, did he die? Yeah. Oh. Poor Teamer. He might have not been alive to begin with anyway. But we did succeed on that one, right? We have enough candy. We've collected all the candy in this place. So suddenly, a new member of the big, large, huge clutch... Uh, comes up. He's got he's got some really cool shades and a vest, a, a, a like really cool puffy vest on, and he's got these massive sideburns, like ridiculously huge Martin Van Buren sideburns. And he he steps forward and he says, "Hey, hey guys, let's get back and let's eat some of this candy. Let's do it. All we gotta do is get back and consume all of this candy. We gotta transport it back and then eat it." So I know what I'm gonna do. I and and he he comes forward and he bends down and his like massive sideburns start to be start to form into like like little like 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 big sheets and hands sort of thing, like flippers. He's gonna pick it up with his sideburns. Oh. But before but before he does that, he remembers like oh yeah, I've got to use my t- tattoo, my temporary tattoo box. So he he pulls out a temporary tattoo and he and he opens it and he slaps it on his arm and he pulls it back. It's My Little Pony, no. of course. The, the ultimate girly tattoo. Yeah. But Tucker, uh, Tucker loves it. Tucker, big, big, large, huge, loves it. This really he's gets him fan. going. Mm-hmm. He's a huge, he's a brony. Yeah. Straight like you, up Jim. brony. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Not exactly. But, he's Jim. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like Tucker, he is a brony. So let's see. So I'm going to use, oh, and as he pulled it out, he used his... As he's, as he's doing it, he's actually using his, like, arm wrestling with his sideburns. And this is also training him. He's supporting it with his arm. He uses his sideburns yes. to arm wrestle. And it's also going to train him up just like just like he's going to get pumped up like over the, like an over-the-top with sliced alone. So let's see. So he's using his dream. He's using his box of temporary tattoos. He's boastful. He's using arm wrestling. And he gets his basic. And he gets his sideburns. Wow. He might explode. All for broke. This is it. I'm going to go all out. Okay. Doc, read your card. The ghosts of all your dead goblins come back to help. They died because they were clumsy or careless, and they're even worse when they're dead. So I have two successes, but I also have two hits, so I'm going to also die. And a bad thing. And I have a bad thing going forward. 
So, so how my rolls go- have been terrible. What do the ghosts do to you? So, the ghosts of all the goblins in there. Which ghost specifically kills you? Specifically, um, specifically, let's see. So, all of the big, large, huge clutch decides to help out Tucker. <laughs> we'll help! Yeah, let's, let's help him out, guys. Oh. Oh. Help him out. So, so, he can't Butch, say that. Butch, Butch runs forward to help, but he, but he accidentally takes a big bite out of uh, Martin Van Buren's arm, I'm sorry, out of Tucker's arm, <laughs> and Diesel is just so disgustingly smelling, even through death, that it, that it just, it's like, it's like breathing in, uh, you know, chlorine gas, it just <laughs> burns through the lungs the of Tucker. Brown ghost. And, and uh, the really hairy hot rod, all of his hair just starts getting tangled up and like choking out Tucker and then you know Sly seems to be turned on by all this so it's just gross you can see it through the speedo he's still wearing just the speedo by the way Goblet, uh, so, cana- canonically in the rules yeah. goblins do not have genitalia well I'm sorry but Sly, <laughs> Sly does it's part of it's part of his defining feature you can't have an 80's porno mustache without genitalia sorry oh. it's not worse. so Tucker is just he's, affix- he's asphyxiated his, his lungs burn burn through he, you know, he's being, um, he had a big bite taken out of him, his, his, and also he's just completely disgusted, so he just dies from a combination of all of this. He just can't take it anymore. Oh. But the ghosts are busy with him, But where our success But, that from. being said, but the ghosts are busy with, with Tucker, and he's able to, with his, with his sideburns, he's been able to form, because they did get two successes, like a... The sideburns are, are sort of like frozen in place. You could actually possibly They're separate. use yeah yeah, and you could possibly use those sideburns to drag the the candy behind. Like you could actually possibly make, make a sideburn sled or something <laughs> like that. You maybe get the candy out this way. So we're we're we're, we're getting closer to our goal. Oh, Sly should just stay dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive. Diesel is silent. It's ghostly now. Yeah. A series of strange events have befallen the neighborhood. I shall catalog this as I munch upon the candy which is in my bag. But all the ghosts from the the time bandits are trying to get that candy too. It is the logical thing to do. (coughs) Ghosts cannot hurt me. There is no evidence that a ghost would do such a thing to me as they are of my own clutch. I am quite optimistic that this is the case. You have a bad thing going forward. Oh, that's not happy. Um, in that case, an advantage and uh, reroll. Captain, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a reroll is what that is. Otherwise, he's going to be torn to shreds by ghosts. I don't believe in you. Um, okay, he's still torn to shreds by ghosts, and, and no good thing. No good thing this time. No way to success. Oh no, that's no. Uh, it cancels out. We, I don't believe in you. <laughs> we very possibly might not win. Uh, so what happens is Ghost the ghosts come and say, No, we want to live. Wind the timey-wimey machine. Take us back in time and we will live again. Which one is that? That doesn't sound like any of them. Take us back in time and we will live again. I read a book. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, basically, they gang up on him, wind the timey wimey machine, and all of them just <laughs> out of existence. You you don't know if that means success or failure, but um, they actually go back in time and invent t- uh, candy. They they might have. It's entirely possible. You will never know. <laughs> uh, that said, the time bandits are gone. <laughs> We shall mourn them. Yeah. A little. Have you gone? But not much. I haven't gone yet, but do you, you had something planned. Yeah, I do, but I can wait for after yours. Well, I want to see what you have planned, but... Okay, so... I'll just Don't you have two goblins left? I have one goblin left. Yeah, yeah you, sh- you should be going. <clears throat> so You should have already been Meanwhile, going. elsewhere, <laughs> um, you see uh, there's one goblin who's still in the neighborhood <laughs> trick-or-treating. Um, he knocks on the door, and they open it. It's like, oh, hey there, little boy. Where's your parents? My parents are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you want to say that again? Because I sorry, I was laughing before you even said it. I knew it was coming. Sorry, go, go ahead. My parents are dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so sorry to hear that. Um, here, have all the candy. Um, but then a uh, a spotlight appears in the distance in the cloud cover, and it's got a uh, rather goblin esque bat. 
Um, of course. And we, uh, we, we see our first shot of our uh, hero, Badman, as he turns and his mask is looking up toward the sky and he says uh, to the person offering him the candy, No. Gob them needs me. <laughs> Gob them. <laughs> Gob them. Gob him. <laughs> and so uh, he uh, sweeps his sweeps his cape and uh, like sort of does like this grappling hook leap thing. He don't you don't have no idea what he's grappling onto, but he grapples <laughs> and he, no starts, <laughs> <laughs> he starts swinging back toward uh, back toward the mother base. Uh, Any punch the, ghosts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He drops in. He engages in combat with the ghosts, um, saying, "I am the knight." <laughs> So you're going to roll dice? Or? <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, it's one for free. Um, Just finding roll. feature, he's being bad man. Swear to me. <laughs> uh, special ops, combat, quite severe. We'll meet it all villains, ghosts, Just, obviously. Just roll them all. Roll all the villains. <laughs> um, but he's fighting his own ghosts. And he's using uh, the metal gear as a, uh, a weapon. Mm-hmm. Throwing you kind of like the batarang. The gobbarang. Gobbarang. The bad orang, because he's bad man. The D. Oh, okay. lucky year! Rerolling. Okay. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. So, um, two successes, a good thing, and uh, three injuries. <laughs> so, what are the ghosts of the uh, the the Shadow well, Slinker claim? But you have do? two successes, though, right? We just need three oh, more. Okay, cool. um, so, Ronald is uh, clearly <laughs> the uh, the most aggressive, and so he's just uh, taking on uh, Badman uh, up front. Uh, and they're sort of trading blows, and Batman manages to take him out. Um, he gets CQ'd seed from behind by Sworded Snake, uh, but he manages to toss him off, and now he's struggling. Uh, and finally, uh, when he's like, when he thinks he's victorious and he's won, Ninja just comes up and <laughs> stabs him from behind. And sadly, uh, Batman, though he managed to uh, avert the threat. It has to be a death that happens without a body. So he can come back in a reboot. <laughs> That's right. There you go. So you see him get stabbed, and then Ninjo drags him into the shadows, but we don't actually get to see whether or not he's actually dead. Oh, boy. Well, Spots, the last of the overly eager clutch. Steps, well, steps is sort of the wrong word. He's a mass of floating dots, for he is the pointillism goblin. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Shut up, your dad. <laughs> um, that all- doesn't even make sense. <laughs> You're fired, says Frump. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Points of, uh, spot has, doesn't fear uh, ghosts as much since uh, he can just dissipate into a cloud of paint and then reform on top of the candy where it's already inside him like he's already eaten it. Wait, the, the dots are made of paint? Not, goblin paint. Not like goblin... You know what, actually, I I prefer that. Spork is very confused. (laughs) Uh, So he's going to to use his pointillism body to to pass through the the ghosts of the rest of the clutch and get the candy inside him without even having to chew. Oh, nice. So not getting caught, slippery skin, uh, and pointillism. Oh, come on. Everyone else has died on their first roll. Oof. And the, you can re-roll, right? Yeah, Essentially, we, you need, got, you, we need three more successes. Yeah, you ended up with a success, but also two, like a death. And a bad hits. thing. So yeah, better just re-roll that. I want at least two successes. Oh. Hey, hey. Ah, he doesn't die immediately! Two successes, an injury, and a bad thing. So, uh, he forgot to unwrap the candy before eating it, so it's all inside of him, and he's got a really bad stomach. Ew! But all we need is one more success, and we will have successfully completed our our, our goblin quest. As he's um, <clears throat> sitting there with his stomach a kind of writhing in pain, you hear uh, the tap tapping of a cane, uh, and you hear someone say, "Why are we still here? Just to suffer. The body I've lost, the comrades I've lost, won't stop hurting. I must alleviate this pain." With candy. <laughs> and so Master Mueller, uh, with his beret and sunglasses, is uh, getting ready to uh, indulge. <laughs> drown, drown out the pain with this candy. Is it a phantom pain? Is it a phantom pain? Yeah. There's, there's phantoms yeah. everywhere. There's phantoms all over the place. It's got to be a phantom. These there's a phantom snake. <laughs> These phantoms are all pains. 
Yeah, seriously, they've killed most of the others. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I got the cure for what? Else. Oh no! <laughs> this pain is mine. I have to hang on to it. Always remember what happened. Everything we've lost. Uh, so he's rather dramatic, as you can see. Severe. Uh, yes, quite severe too. Um, <sighs> oh, I like my pain. It makes me who I am. <laughs> He uh, was also clutching his metal, uh, clutching the metal gear, in, in, mem- in memory of his uh, fallen comrades. Uh, that's it. Yeah, two successes, uh, but also two injuries. No, one success. Or but one, that's all we need. That's all we needed. Yeah. He dies, but yeah. Uh, so he's eating the candy, um, and uh, he, he he's surrounded on all sides by these ghosts that are just coming in. Because even when he thought they were defeated, they just come right back because they're ghosts. <laughs> Uh, and he's eating the candy, um, but there's this moment of triumph, and he, uh, he silently lets himself get consumed by the ghosts as he swallows the last piece of chocolate. You know, if we hadn't done this on Halloween, the, uh, undead probably wouldn't have come back. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and that means every single goblin except Spots died. So Spots gets to eat all the rest of the candy. I'm not sure spots really exist. That's true, actually. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe in it. I, that's the M. Night Shyamalan twist to this movie, and that spots wasn't actually real at all. Yeah. He was just a collective hallucination. So so he has this giant pot of uh, candy. That Swimming he, pool full of candy. Yeah. That, that he gets to enjoy all by himself if the orcs don't find it first. And the ghosts don't get up to him. Wow. Uh, so... That was Goblin Quest. Charles Goblin Quest! <laughs> it was highly illogical. <laughs> I'm a dual diverse of this one! That sounds more like a bull I don't know, is bull a goblin? <laughs> That's an interesting theory. <laughs> I don't know, man. That was hey. highly enjoyable. Indeed. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hey, okay, so there's an epilogue. Oh, you're going to go down in history no matter what you did. Goblins are going to talk about you for weeks to come. Maybe months. Ooh. Yours will be a story of greatness, of creatures that were fed up with their lot in life and decided to strike out to claim their destinies. Take, in, take it in turns to pick another player's goblin, dead or alive, presumably dead, and say what other, the other goblins will whisper about them around the trash fires in the coming nights. Go around until every player has at least had one of their goblins passed into legend. That's it. The game is over and you're victorious. Yeah, so that sly guy, I hear he was the creepiest. Like, his creepiness is like, he's, he, it's his picture in the Goblin Dictionary of Creepy. <laughs> that guy. But we can't even read. <laughs> That's why we have picture dictionaries. Oh. Dictionaries. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that Murky McDragonfly was, was the one goblin who successfully traveled through time. Some would say it was Spork, and I know he managed to get those 88 miles out of that device. I'm sure of it. <laughs> well, well, nin- Ninjo, Ninjo is, is can, you never can tell where he is. He's probably out there somewhere. He's probably behind you right now. His stealthiness, his hidden, his hidden abilities are just so incredible that he could even hide from death itself. Did you hear about the new Batman sequel? <laughs> <laughs> He couldn't hide from Frump. I hear he fired him personally. <laughs> In fact, he fired me once. Twice. That's he, a lie. He hired me back just so he could fire me. <laughs> you know, they're opening up a new exhibit where they're showing spots. <laughs> He's a traveling art show. <laughs> <laughs> he just got so fat from candy that his, his, his body is a canvas. <laughs> an ugly, spotty canvas. Oh, and that was the tale of the Goblin Quest, known as the Quest for More Cavities. The secret for of Curly's Taffy. Oh. Y'all be safe on Halloween. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, <to> me. <laughs> be safe. <laughs> oh, that was fun. This has been Roll With It Unplugged, a production of BackwardCompatible.com. The players for this episode are Jim Weaver, Adam Doc Bracken, Chris Kruger, and Brian McKittrick. Running Goblin Quest by Grant Howitt. Your producer is Chris Kruger. For the Backward Compatible Crew, thank you for listening. Thank you.